Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Fitz Rupee Cast featuring Dawn of War 2, the Elite Pod. Red Rupee here calling the shots for you tonight, as always, on this one on one game of Dawn of War 2. We've got a sweet mid level game on Quest Heresy here. Uh, a lot of folks have been asking me recently, hey, Red, is, is it worth getting into the Elite Mod now? I'm out of shape. All I see is the pro players and the top level folks playing. And it, that's not true at all. There's lots of mid-level games. There's, there's even, it's not uncommon at all to see folks starting new or low-level games, little newbie games there in the custom matches of the Elite Mods. So if you're kind of concerned, don't worry about it. Hop on in. We're going to see a, a, a mid-level game here that's lots of fun. And I actually, I don't, man, I don't have time to sit around and talk at the beginning of the matches anymore because unfortunate side effect of this relic patch is that you can't pause the game anymore. So I guess that works out for you folks that don't really like listening to me talk about stuff. I was going to talk about MAGFest and my conventions and stuff I did this weekend and some other Elite Mod stuff. But anyways, for those of you that don't like me rambling, I guess I'll go ahead and introduce the players. On the blue side, we have Mr. Falschmjäger. Elifas over here playing the big nasty hive tyrant and his opposing also big tanky unsuppressible melee nasty over here the chaos lord piloted by mr dandalus on the red side so standard orders coming in from both sides both players capturing their natural vps and moving out into the center of the map we've got a pair of termagants oh and actually a second hormagant brood coming in as well for mr elifas and they're finding themselves quite outgunned over here in the first skirmish of the game they're gonna have to get the heck out of there uh managed to actually not lose too many models surprisingly despite deciding to engage that unfortunate engagement right there chaos lord gets pushed off by both squads of the termagants and the hive tyrant himself knocking over everything on the retreat he's the chaos lord he doesn't care he's just gonna stomp through it all Quest Heresy, a pretty fun map. I like this map a lot. I feel like most players have kind of a love-hate relationship with that. this map. They either love it or hate it. This whole center of the map is locked down by choke points and walls, but all of the resources are here. All of the outlying points are, of course, the victory points and a lone contested power node, which so far no one cares about. But everything getting forced off for Mr. Dandalus. After that first engagement, Elifus came back with the entirety of his little swarm over here. He's got four squads of Gaunts and also bringing some Spore Mines on the field, really going for the early game dominance right now. And right now we can see uh, Dandalus sitting here with a single generator. And oh, I, I was actually getting ready to say he's probably going for Raptors. Normally when you see that one generator, that's an indication that the other player, if you're playing Space Marine or Chaos, is going for Raptors or assault space marines but it looks like he's just going for the second squad of chaos space marines so we're having uh, a pair of squads on each side we got two ga two gaunts two gants two ticks two tacks and a big engagement look like it's forthcoming here in the center of the map uh chaos heretics actually getting grenade launchers that's fun to oh a pair of grenade launchers actually both tick squads getting the grenade launcher upgrade and i think that's actually lots of fun on this map you can see since we do have these choke points and walls, the heretics can fire from relative safety into the into the piles of Tyranids without really putting themselves out there and causing themselves a lot of requisition bleed. Got to be very careful taking these Chaos Space Marines around the corner before he eliminates those Spore Mines. Spore Mines going in, trying to get the pop right in between everything, suppresses both squads of the Chaos Space Marines, allowing the Termagants to move in and start dealing some major damage without taking any return fire. Heretics now focusing down the Hive Tyrant, and I believe, unfortunately, this is the exact opposite way he should be handling this engagement. The Chaos Heretics with Grenade Launchers should be focusing these squishy, uh, masked up roots over here, and the Chaos Space Range should also be signaling out this Hive Tyrant. They can deal with that a lot more efficiently than trying to deal with that with the splash damage of those Grenade Launchers. Uh, it looks like the Tick split up, finally throwing some volleys onto the Gaunts and Gants, but I think it's a bit too late Lost a uh, Chaos Space Marine on one squad, about to lose some more over here, but manages to get all three of them home. But it looks like it's going to cause Danalus' power farm for the time being. Elifaz taking a decisive win right there. The map is very blue. Might manage to snag himself a generator or two here, but it looks like he's just going to go ahead and pull out. I think he could have stuck around. Oh, he is? Nope. Being indecisive, making it hard for me to cast the game here. No problem right now. 479 to 432 after that first set of engagements leaving Mr. Elifas a bit ahead in VPs and way ahead in map control and power generation. You can see 
compared to the one node down here. We have all three now popping up here for the Tyranid forces. Those big nasty Tyranid looking generators. Chaos Lord now moving into the center of the map with all of his Tic Tac army behind him. And the Gaunts are moving in to respond to the approaching forces. Those grenade launchers now going to be way more effective now that they can focus on the Gaunts instead of trying to hit that that Hive Tyrant on his own. You can see kind of blobbed up but now spreading out to take the map. Heretics, a third squad over here. I think that's a good choice. I think what happened right there is Dandalus realized that the two squads of grenade launchers was not exactly a good choice because the two opposing squads of Hormigaunts, after that initial knockback barrage, can really just easily move in, take the her take the uh, heretics out, and force off the space marines, allowing the Termagants and Hormigaunts to really do everything they want. A beautiful drain life right there on the far side, of, right in the middle of this engagement, actually, while the Hive Tyrant engages on the far side. Grenade launchers going down. Chaos Lord taking lots of fire. He might be able to take out this Hormigon squad, but he's getting very low. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. They get the kill. The Gaunts all retreat, and that's a big loss for Dandalus. He did get a lot of requisition bleed in right there. You can see only about five or six Gaunts heading home out of all three of those squads, but now allowing everything to move in here pretty well. It may well cost him his power farm. He's got all these spore mines coming onto the field, but really hasn't made use of them beyond that first engagement. So he's going to have to be very careful. The second squad of spore mines is just going to get annihilated before they do anything at all, unfortunately. And Dandalus securing the map, taking everything back. Uh, really needs to start spreading out and taking some of these points after he locks down this gen farm. The Tyranids are trying to find an approach to move in here, but these grenade launcher heretics combined with the melee heretics are going to be able to pretty much keep all these guns at bay, I think, pretty well if he plays this right. Oh, um, no, I'm not sure if that was intentional or whether he accidentally retreated all that. Uh, that's... I, he didn't Alt-X because this squad didn't retreat, which, of course, retreats everything, but maybe he had those selected and just meant to pull one back, but the mass retreat there, either a, a, a poor mistake right there or hopefully not what he intended to do because he's now seeding the entire map once again to the Tyranid forces. When he had a pretty commanding position, they would have had to approach through this tiny little force, uh, the, this choke point here, allowing the kind of cannonade of all the grenades and chaos space marines to really cause some hurt to these numerous roods here. But everything once again turning blue as Dandalus and Eliphas both head into tier two. Chaos Lord is still down. I think I think Dandalus should really pick him up. He really needs something to kind of help mitigate the advantage that these twin Hormigant broods are gracing him with. Uh, he got he got a good Gen Bash in, which is pretty great. But all of the all of the kind of neutral contested power farms are in the hands of the Tyranid now, which kind of kind of eliminates the advantage of having these three generators. I think with those three, he's still generating probably about 15 or so more than his opponent. Uh, Hormigons and Heretics in a in a little scuffle on this side of the map. I'm not sure. It looks like the Heretics... Oh no! He Doom Blasted! I'm not sure if that was the right choice there. Oh, and down goes the third Heretic squad, the only melee squad he had. Uh, that's the second time those Hormigons narrowly escaped and get nabbed themselves a kill. They got the, they got the Chaos Lord, then got themselves some Heretics. Hivemind doing a good job keeping them on their toes tonight. We have a big push here, a predatory, predatory placement of these twin horn shrines right now going down right next to the power farm of Mr. Eliphas. He's going to try to do something about it, but I don't think the Hive Tyrant on his own was going to be able to deal with four bloodletters that are going to be consistently spawning from these corn shrines and the focus fire of all of these Chaos Space Marines. This could be a really good play right here. Eliphas does have the Tyrant Guard coming out, though. That's going to be difficult to hold this point against that. Maybe if he gets a couple Siege Marines. But it looks like he's saving up. He, he started to build a Blood Crusher briefly, but he is instead, I'm, I'm assuming, going to save up for a Chaos Dreadnought, I would have to imagine at this point in the game. Uh, the, here comes the Tyranid Gaunts and Gants. 
he has the Space Marines kind of all over the place. They're not here to support his investment of these two shrines. If you're going to put up buildings, you really have to put in some resources to protect them. He has these two squads worshipping over the shrines, but that's not working out at all. Hormigons ripping through all of those Chaos Heretics. They just narrowly escape. It looks like the second squad will as well. That's fortunate considering how long he left those in there. And these Chaos Space Marines just capping some resource points in the back. I don't think that's what he wanted to do there. Uh, I don't think that was the right play at all. Not really tactically sound to build those forward posts and then not defend them. He's buying himself some time to get the map back though, as all of the Tyranids are focused on taking out these shrines. But for the time being, I, I don't think that's quite going to be enough. The Chaos Lord is still down. Now all he has out here are these two squads of Chaos Space Marines, and the Tyranid army is going to be able to easily deal with that. The Dreadnought coming onto the field. We'll see what kind of Dreadnought he chooses to upgrade that to. And once again, I think we're just kind of feeling the lack of the Chaos Lord, the lack of any kind of solid melee counter to protect these Chaos Space Marines. Uh, they're, they're just like, you know, they're just like normal Space Marine attacks. They, they do great DPS and they're, 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 they're the core of your army, but they offer zero utility, so the second the enemy gets anything to deal with them, there's, there's just nothing they can do on their own without support. You really need heretics around, keep melee off, or provide some sort of supporting fire. Chaos Lord to knock things around. Just really lots of options, but now with this Chaos Dreadnought coming on the field, went with the Mark of Corn, giving it that second big nasty Power Claw right there. That's going to be difficult for the Tyranids to deal with as there's very little AV on the field. We've got the Tyrant Guard out here, which was unanswered until that we saw that Dreadnought, and now that the Dreadnought's here, oh, we see the Hive Tyrant getting the Crushing Claw as well. So that's going to be two strong melee forces. I'm not sure if the Dreadnought's going to be able to deal with both of those. The Blood Rage getting activated, all hell's breaking loose here in the center as the Gaunts swarm all over the Chaos Space Marines. Blood Sacrifice going down as well, bringing some Blood Letters into the field. The Hive Tyrant got knocked clear of the Dreadnought, allowing him some sweet extra hits on this Tyrant Guard. The Blood Letters from the Blood Sacrifice now contributing to the damage on that Tyrant Guard, and I think that Corn Dreadnought will actually be able to deal with both the Hive Tyrant and that Tyrant Guard. Excellent use there of the Blood Sacrifice. However, these sad little heretics might not be making it home. Down they go. That's two squads down. One lone heretic squad left, which is definitely going to need to fix up this injured Blood Rage and Dreadnought, which is heading way deep into enemy territory. Got to be very careful when you activate that Blood Rage towards the end of an engagement. You really don't need it when it's only a squad or two left, and it's not going to secure you that many more kills. So if you hit it and then they retreat, they're going to pull that Dreadnought all the way back to their base, and if they have any sort of decent anti-vehicle, which fortunately for Dandalus, Elifus did not, they'd be able to knock out that Dreadnought without much effort at all. Uh, Dandalus down to just just the one squad of heretics. Both of these Chaos Space Marines starting to level up, though. I, I, I think I kind of want to see like a, like a Havoc or something to really control this. It's so easy to lock down the center of the map uh, with a Havoc on this map, and really, if you can control that and you've got something like a Dreadnought to support, I'm not sure if this is an Overwatch mistake or he's actually going for the second Dreadnought, but I don't see why not. He could get two Dreadnoughts, make one the Mark of Corn, give the other the Mark of Siege with that Rocket Launcher, which the, the, the Frenzied Barrage actually does some pretty excellent anti-infantry damage, so with all these Gaunt Squads kind of blobbing around on their own right now, I think that'd actually be a reasonable choice to go for, but we'll see what he decides to do with it. Even the, even the basic auto cannon would be pretty excellent against this infantry-heavy army for the time being. Hive Tyrant now getting upgraded to the Bonded Exoskeleton, which is going to give him some invulnerability, really allow him to tangle with this Chaos Dreadnought since he'll have, uh, I think, is it 10 or 15 seconds of invulnerability? Uh, we'll see once that gets upgraded. Uh, doesn't specify on the tooltip, but I know it's something similar to that. Gaunt's going all over the place. It's 341 to 252 at the moment, so Dandalus about 100 VPs behind for the time being. The, the Tyranid player really been kind of maintaining the majority of the map control for most of this game, but Dandalus has been doing a good job, eliminated that threat of the Tyrant Guard, managed to take out the Hive Tyrant once too in response to his own Chaos Lord going down, but the Chaos Lord's Finally back onto the field here, probably going to be getting some upgrades shortly 
and we'll be seeing what he can bring to the fight now that he's back out here. Venom Brute coming out. Oh, he actually, no, he canceled it. Getting a second Tyrant card. Uh, I, I, I don't think I agree with that particular choice, but we'll see how, uh, what did he do with the second? Oh, he actually went for, he went for the second Mark of Corn Dreadnought. So he's got two of those out here now. Gonna be activating Blood Rage on both of them. And I don't think even the Tyrant Guard with the blinded Exoskeleton is going to be able to deal with them. Everything coming to a head here once again. Those Hormogons getting in. No real melee counter. Let the Galaxy Burn was easily dodged there by the Quick Gaunt Squads. And it looks like, oh no, the Hormogons get another kill on another Heretic Squad. That's three Heretic Squads down. But despite that victory, a small one at its best, there are still two big nasty Dreadnoughts here in the center. Oh my gosh, look at them just hacking through those Hormigaunts on retreat. Oh my gosh, Hormigaunts, speaking of, actually going to be able to... They do take out a squad of Chaos Space Marines. My goodness, there's just nothing to deal with them. The Chaos Lord actually can't really do enough damage on his own. He's tanky, but until he gets a weapon upgrade, he just doesn't do damage. So unfortunately, those Chaos Space Marines just fell while the Chaos... Lord was trying to save him. I'm not sure he should have gone for the, the dual corn here. I think diversifying your build is the best thing you can do in this game. Really, the larger variety of threats that you can present to an enemy is, is much better than kind of homogenizing your army with a pair of the same type of large unit. Uh, I, I don't want to say it, it vitiates his army composition exactly, but I I, I just think there, there, there could have been a, a better choice here at this point in the game. Especially, we're seeing, I mean, the, the Hormigons have, have nabbed so many squad kills, I don't know how they're only level 2 at this point. I guess Heretics just don't offer a lot of XP, but we've seen three squads of Heretics and one of those Chaos Space Marine squads, and the Chaos Lord himself all going down to the Heretics, which have been relatively unanswered so far. Or, not the Heretics, the Hormigons, sorry. Getting my H's mixed up here between the Hormas and the Heretics once again and we see the Tyranids just kind of hanging out in the center not really pushing too far he knows he doesn't quite have what he needs to deal with these dreadnoughts I think he could be a little more aggressive now that he does have both the Venom Brood the Tyrant Guard and additionally the Hive Tyrant all being able to do some sweet damage anti-vehicle to these pair of Chaos Corn dreads. Here comes another big engagement. Let the galaxy burn goes down, but doesn't do terribly much at the moment. Both of these dreads getting the blood rage activated once again, beating the heck out of this tyrant guard. The hive tyrant once again trying to help out Chaos Lord in the middle of everything. Fully upgraded now with the lightning claws and icon of corn. Looks like looks like that tyrant guard is down. We might see the hive tyrant go down once again. It's actually going to be a duel to the death here. I'm not sure who's going to win this. It's down to just the last couple of hits, and oh, Blood Rage gets activated, takes out the Hive Tyrant with 11 HP left. Oh no, he needs to get his Heretics out of there. That Corn Dreadnought wants blood for the Blood God. He doesn't care where it comes from. He needs to retreat, but he may have forgotten to cancel the worship. And the Termagant's actually trying to get the kill here. It only had 11 HP left. One HP now, down it goes before his brother can get in there and help him out. The Termagants get their kill. They know they're not doing anything else for this engagement and head on out of there. That was a crazy engagement. Oh my goodness. The ty Hive Tyrant went down. The Tyrant Guard went down. They did manage to take one of those Chaos Dreads down, but Dandalus down to almost nothing at the moment. Both players heading into Tier 3 despite being pretty low on on any kind of real army. I mean, Elephaz does have three Gaunt Squads, and at this point, they're kind of leveled up, have all their upgrades, have their Endless Swarm, their Venom Sacks, and Adrenal Glands, all that, all those fun, nasty Tyranid bits you have to, you have to cram into those little Gaunts to make them effective in the mid to late game. So he's definitely got the potential to take all this map back without much issue, and he's, he's still got about a 100-point advantage on Dandalus, Chaos Space Marines trying to break apart some of those capillary towers. And, man, it's, it's, it's still anyone's game. Uh, Dandalus has plenty of requisition. He can bring some more Heretics or Chaos Space Marines onto the field after he hits Tier 3. Uh, doesn't have a lot of power at the moment. I'm not, I'm not sure if he even needed to go Tier 3 at the moment, but you gotta figure 
when you're going against Tyranids, you're going to start seeing Carnifexes. I think, I think still having this, the second Sea Shred would have been better than having two Corn Dreads. But uh, he obviously lost one, so maybe going into Tier 3, probably going to be getting himself a Chaos Predator when the time arrives, because I'm sure we'll be seeing Elephus bringing out some Carnifexes once he has the resources to do so. But really, instead of, I, I think instead of focusing on the power at this point, he really should have just gone for the VPs. He could have he taken out the power with just the Venom Broods. He doesn't need all this to deal with that as well. He could have sent the Hive Tyrant or the Termagants over to that natural VP and started taking off the, la the last few. But uh, sitting at 120 to 260 right now, the Carnifex is in the build order. Going to be popping out here, uh, getting some vengeance for his Tyrant Guard little brothers that have perished here against the Chaos Army. Chaos Dreadnought looks like it's just going to camp out on at the eastern side of the map and lock down that contested victory point. Let the galaxy burn, not quite hitting its mark. Went uphill, so it landed a bit short. And I hope Dandalus isn't going to stay in this fight. Yeah, he does pull it back. Might be a bit too late, though. He's lost so many squads of these Hormigons, it looks like they might get another... Oh, that's four squads. Is this? Yeah, this is the first squad. This is the one I've been watching, and I think every one of those squad kills has been for that squad. Man, that is an efficient set. Oh, man, we got some Chaos Terminators dropped down on this side of the map. They getting a kill, demoralizing. I don't know really how you demoralize uh, Tyranids. I, I think the, the hive mind must get sad, I guess. Uh, the, but unfortunately, loses his Dreadnought there to the Hive Tyrant, now also upgraded with his Psychic Shield, gonna be giving him even more tanky prowess right now. Down to 12 HP, just narrowly escapes from the Terminators. Oh, they teleport in for the kill, but it might cost them a model or two as they teleported right into the maw of a Carnifex, which is now in the field. You almost never, almost never wanna really use that forward teleport offensively. As you can see right now, you find yourself in a precarious position like this and those Terminators now really have no answer for the Carnifex. He needs to move those Venom Broods away from that Carnifex so that Carnifex can get in there. There it goes. It looks like it's, yep, upgraded with the Thorn back, now charging into those Termies. Chaos Lord is starting to take out those Venom Broods. Gonna have to pull those back if he's not careful. That attack speed on those Lightning Claws is pretty high. The, the DPS on that is, is pretty nuts, especially considering its power melee on that heavy armor of the Warrior Broods. A lone Terminator went down. It looks like he might lose another one if he's not careful. His, he's managed to secure some victory points and stall out for a little bit right there. He, he did win that engagement on the eastern side, so the contested VP stayed in his hands. And finally getting a second teleport, probably just the moment before another Terminator went down, but that's going to be expensive to reinforce. And we can see right now, this is this is looking not good at all for Mr. Dandalus. Elifas really, really isolating all of his squads, singling them out, and causing a big mess of the place. Man, oh man. I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do about this. He's doing a good job, I mean, honestly, stalling right now. He's, he's getting all the VPs. He's actually about to have a 2-0 cap despite. I mean, look at this unit bar and look at the map control. That's kind of funny. I mean, all of the resource points are blue, but Dandalus is getting the VPs and stalling out for what he can. I think if, he, oh, did he actually, he re, he's reinforcing his Terminators, which are actually a bit cheaper than I thought. I thought they were closer to 250, but maybe they're only 150 at the moment. Lots of red resource on the field. I think if he used maybe another Blood Sacrifice or two during some of those engagements, he could have protected one of his treads a little better. Uh, red resource kind of often just gets forgotten at this stage of the game for, for, for newer players. Uh, not, not that these guys are new, they're... Uh, Def definitely some solid mid-level players, though, but you see the Chaos Lord has some pretty great globals, so don't want to discount those at this stage of the game, especially when you need every little advantage you have. That said, I guess considering all of his heretics are out of here, I guess he just doesn't really have much that he wants to blood sacrifice for the moment. Uh, Tyranid's going to have probably another Carnifex or, or a Licker or a Swarm Lord, something coming on the field here shortly. I think... Dandalus' only chance is really to try to get maybe a Predator on the field or something along those lines. I think I wouldn't even have reinforced that, that third Terminator. I think I would have just sent them out with the two models and let them do what they could while trying to get a Predator onto the field because I think that's the only way he's going to be able to deal with this Carnifex. 
Uh, that said, Elifus, like, all, his, the, the main force of his army is still just these Gants. He doesn't really have much else. I think with the Terminators being able to deal with the Gants, if you get got the Predator out here to deal with this Carnifex, he'd be able to get back into this game relatively easily, but his VPs are ticking away. But it's not over yet. He's, he's, he's stalling wherever he can. These Terminators will be able to answer most of the Gants and Gants pretty easily. And he's kind of... The, the, the thing is right now is that Elifas has to commit the majority of his army to dealing with these Terminators and keeping them around. Uh, I think he could just send maybe the Carnifex and a squad of Termagants to kind of drop the Toxin Sacks, slow these guys down, and then use everything else elsewhere to keep them off the VPs. He's kind of blobbing around despite having a much larger superior force than his opponent, so he could probably be playing that a little better. Uh, Danilus really kind of forcing them to split the map at the moment, but... Elifas kind of just blobbing around and and it's drawn the game out a little further than he needs to allow it to. Uh, buy, buying a Hormagon squad, that's kind of curious. I think just about anything else at this point would be better. But we'll see what he does with that. Really should, I mean, like, like I said, a, a Lictor, or a, I guess he's got two Fexes on the field. He doesn't need any more Fexes. But Terminator's moving into the center of the map. 100 points to, to 84 at the moment and can still go in any direction. Uh, as, I, as I've mentioned here a couple times, I'm surprised to see Jandalus still in this. Uh, second Carnifex went for the Barb Strangler, so he is diversifying his build. He kind of possibly learning from Jandalus' mistake there. Didn't want to go for two melee walkers, getting one range, one melee. Let the galaxy burn going down once again. We do finally have the Chaos Predator coming out here. Imperial Abyss going down. This could be a big win for him. If he can eliminate one or two of these Gaunt squads smartly, Elephas did not just panic and hit the retreat button, but he wants to pull these Gaunts a little bit further away. I think it might have been too late. He finally hits the retreat and down they go. Uh, these Terminators also just kind of standing in their own abyss, taking a lot of damage between that and the Barbed Strangler Carnifex. Those Carnifexes have been taking fire from those Plague Marines, though, so they are a bit beat up. Those Terminators trying to get out of here, maybe trying to go for another victory point capture over there while the Space Marines push up the western side of the map. Really doing a great job stalling here. Terminators get out of harm's way just barely before those Carnifexes do them in. If he can eliminate these Rippers, the combination of the Plague Marines and the Chaos Pred, especially already getting upgraded with the Mark of Siege, going to be able to take out both of these Carnifexes. And then there's there's really nothing on the field that's going to be able to deal with that Predator, I think. The Predator and the Terminators, despite having a much smaller army, I think Dandalus is in a great spot. He's got these excellent, powerful, powerful late-game units. Hormagaunt's almost getting another squad once again, but uh, just barely manages to escape with its lone member. Gonna reinforce that, get it back out here. And the Chaos Predator finally starting to pour some shots into those pair of Fexes. All of the Rippers stalling out wherever they can. I don't think he really needs to be kind of scared of these Rippers. He, he, he can just move that tank up. Although I guess he doesn't want to get caught out of position against the Venom Broods out here. That's, that tank's pretty much his last vestige of hope. And we'll see if he can get out onto the map and make it count. It's 78 to 64, and I think this is probably his last chance to push here. We've got a zone throw coming out here for LA Foss, which will be pretty great for dealing with all three of these infantry squads and allow him a snare for this vehicle if he can find it out of position. But uh, let's see what Dandalus can do. I, I, this is pretty much it. we got a spawning pool going down in the back there, so... Elifas really locking it down for the long haul here. There's not too much time left. Hormagant's going in for a kill right now. Chaos Predator scaring off the Hormagants. They thought they were going to get an easy decap on a victory point, maybe, but they were proven wrong as the entirety of the Chaos Forces were hanging out in reserve, ready to deal with them and take them off the map. Chaos Lord trying to get a cap here as the Chaos Forces move in. Dandalus, I think, recognizes this is the time he needs to move in here and do something about that. That zone throw shot doing some big damage to those Chaos Space Marines despite being level four. Wow, one shot from the zone throw and one shot from that Carnifex forces them off the map relatively quickly. But these injured Carnifexes are gonna be no match for this Chaos Predator, I think, between the Plague Marines. Oh no, but a warp shot going down from the Broodnest, or sorry, the, uh, the, the zone throw 
and one current effects goes down, but the Barb Strangler Blast takes out the tank, 70 to 39 right now. It's still a 2-0 cap. I think with that tank going down, that's going to be all she wrote for Dandalus. I think despite having a pretty good showing there, it just didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to. Colin coming in from the high tyrant. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Is that going to be a warrior drop? Or... Oh, it's actually without number there. Dropping another pair of Gaunt and Gantt squads. 53 to 30. Oh, wow. Is it actually... It's actually a 2-0 cap. He's going for the win, trying to get the points here. The Hive Tyrant going to be eliminating these heretics one at a time. They don't care. They're in it to the death. They're going to die for the Chaos Gods right here. Oh, the Hive Tyrant's getting a sink kill. He's actually going to allow the heretics to get the cap off. And it's 28 to 39. Oh no, everything's focusing on killing things. It's kill it, trying to kill the Chaos Lord, but the VPs are ticking away, I think. Dandalus is actually going to take this game with a 3-0 cap here with a clutch play at the end. Oh my goodness, GG is dropped. And wow, I can't believe it. I did not expect it to go that direction at all. GG indeed. Man. Everything was focused. I think, I think Elifus just didn't realize how low his VPs were at that last moment. He had all these squads he just called down. He could have sent those in all directions to cap the VPs. There's nothing on the map, but he was just, he just wanted to kill that Chaos Lord. That's what being vindictive gets you, I guess. It gets you a loss in a situation you could have won, unfortunately. But yeah, here's the battlefield. That's, that's all that remains. There's dead heroes. There's predators. There's, there's Carnifexes. Man, what a match. I love those mid-level games, man. They, they, there's just lots of action. It's fun to watch. I get to actually throw out some suggestions because I feel like I actually can on these mid-level games. The high-level games, I feel like I, I, I'm watching them play, and I, I feel, I feel kind of funny sometimes criticizing players that I know are, are, are higher than my own level. But man, that was a lot of fun. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want any replays cast, be sure to send those down to redrupy 20 at gmail.com. Put replay in the title so my fancy email filter can lock those down and send them to the right folder, and I'll get them casted as soon as I can. Uh, if you guys didn't know, my schedule is going to try to be Tuesdays and Thursdays Well, when I release new episodes. I mentioned that earlier, but figured I'd put that out there. I think I mentioned it all on my stream, not my channel, so I wanted to let everybody know that's the current plan. A couple of weeks, that's all I've been doing. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling here and cut myself off. This is Red Ruby. I'll catch you guys next time.